Welcome back to Pit Beyond the Script. And before we put a rest to the Virginia Tech game, almost 500 yards of rushing. That is incredible. Yeah, when you don't go into a game, you know, you have no idea till the end where the old linemen are saying, can we go back in? We want to get the five number. <laughs> and this place is loving it. All you're worried about is, you know, scoring points and winning the football game, and the yards don't really matter. Well, the Panthers are now in the top 10 in NCAA football in rushing yards per game. You're going to be taking on a Wake Forest team that allowed just 1.7 yards per carry in their upset of NC State on Saturday, so a formidable challenge. No question about it. I mean, you watch what they did. They had a lot of guys in the box. I'm seeing TFLs. I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing North Carolina running jet sweeps and, and they're, you know, tack them in the backfield. So, um, you know, they'll probably take the jet sweep stuff away. So we've got to be on our game and, and, and get a hat on a hat. I did want to ask you about your defense going into this Wake Forest game because the last three weeks, it's been terrific. Some huge plays, sacks, great job, run defensively against Virginia Tech. What improvement have you seen out of your defense over the last few weeks? You know, it, it's never what you want it to be. I mean, every week is a, you know, poses a different challenge. I mean, we did some great things at uh, Virginia a week ago. We did some really good things this past week, but there's still, and maybe it's just the defensive in, in my blood that, you know, is looking for perfection. And you just, every Saturday, you shake your head. And I know I did it for years um, that we can be better. And I guess that's what I'm always looking for is can we be better? And we've got to be more consistent. You've got to have a second half like you had the first half. Bowl eligibility now. Uh, that's always a big factor. And now a chance to win the Coastal Division crown. I know you don't want to think too much about that, but what does just bowl eligibility mean for this team? You know, I think it just takes, you know, that monkey off your back. It's, you know, you kind of got that in your back pocket and, and you don't have to worry about that. And I think it's a, you know, it's a relief, I know, for the coaches um, because I think there's pressure to, you know, to go to bowl games and, and, and extend your season. It gives us more spring ball kind of uh, in, in December. Uh, so it gives us more opportunities to practice and, and develop our young players, which is, is so important in developing a, a program to get it where you want. And it's an opportunity to really celebrate the season with your kids and be able to go to a different city, uh, whether it be north or south or, or west. Uh, so I think it's a great opportunity and, and we don't have to worry about uh, reaching that goal anymore. Talking about your defensive hat, they have Colburn and Carney, two running backs who have almost the exact same amount of yards. A receiver in Dorch who's got 75 receptions. That's sixth most in the NCAA. And then a new quarterback in Jamie Newman who almost threw for 300 yards and runs the football. So this is a, a Wake Forest team on the rise and defensively a formidable challenge. No question about it. I mean, Dave Clawson's an offensive guy. I think they got that offense rolling. You know, they're going to take chances. Like I said, it's all that quarterback. You're going to see that quarterback ride that tailback all the way to the end before he throws it. I mean, we haven't seen an offense ride it that long. Um, so it'll be uh, a great challenge for us in stopping the run. Coach, uh, congratulations on being bowl eligible, third consecutive victory, and good luck this Saturday. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. First ever meeting, by the way, between Pitt and Wake Forest. We'll have more when we come back on Pitt Beyond the Script.